Okay, so let me start. So I continue talking about perfectoid spaces. And again, let me give some short reminder. So uh, again, fix some perfectoid field. So something like QP, it join all p power roots of p to it and complete. And of course, then we have this field I call k flat, which is given by the Fontaine construction, taking the inverse limit, there was a piece power map of k. And in this case, this would be a similar field over characteristic p. So you take the long series field, you join all p power roots of the <coughs> uniformizer and uh, complete. And so in general, we have some uh, a uniformizer here, which would be something like t and some uniformizer on the other side, which would in this case be t. And <coughs> then we had uh, the perfectoid k algebras. Banach k algebra r, such that the power bounded elements are open, are bounded. And <coughs> the crucial condition is that the Frobenius is surjective uh, modulo pi. And then we had proved the tilting equivalent. that uh, the categories are equivalent. So perfectoid k algebras were equivalent to perfectoid k flat algebras. So also this k flat is perfectoid field and the same definition applies. And this just sends any such perfectoid algebra to its so-called tilt, which is R flat. And it's just, again, the Fontaine construction of taking the inverse limit over the piece power map on R. And in particular, this gives us a map from R till R flat to R, which is multiplicative but not additive, uh, which sends D just to something I call G sharp. So it's just a projection to the first coordinate. That's uh, automatic because of the it's the power bounded elements. Oh, okay. So if the piece power is divisible by pi, then uh, the thing itself will be divisible by pi to the one over p because yeah. you're considering the power bounded elements. Um, right. <coughs> OK, so we have this. And then we went on and wanted to define spaces associated to such algebras. And um, the basic object that one associates spaces to in the Suver theory was uh, uh, so-called affinoid algebras, and then we defined a perfectoid affinoid algebra is a pair R R plus, where R is perfectoid, and R plus is some open and integrally closed subring of the power bounded elements, and in most cases it's in many cases, it's really just a set of power bounded elements. And then also, such R R plus, the category of such is also equivalent to the category of R flat, R flat plus, where one way to get this R flat plus is, is again to just take this inverse limit over the piece power map, R plus. <coughs> and then we uh, looked at the spaces associated to them, so the so-called addic spectrum, which consisted of continuous variations on R, which are at most one on this uh, subring of sort of integral elements. And we sort of have the same thing on the other side. <coughs> and then there is a map from here to here, sending x to x flat, which is defined <coughs> by uh, requiring that if you evaluate this variation at this point, so this x flat is a variation which I denote in this way, so it should send any element of r flat to some uh, absolute value, and 
you just take the absolute value of this sharp represent, so the sharp element, which will be an R, and then you can apply this valuation here. And what we proved last time is uh, that this, in fact, is a homeomorphism, which identifies rational subsets. So the rational subsets were a certain natural uh, basis for the topology. <coughs> and there were certain pre-sheaves defined on this uh, topological space. And we showed that for all rational subsets U, which correspond to then under this homeomorphism to a subset of the tilted space, um, it's true that this OX of U or x plus of u is again perfectoid of phenoid. And its tilt is just given by evaluating <coughs> the sheaves on the other side, the pre-sheaves. So some of the situation is that starting from any Perfectoid algebra with this additional datum, we get a space which is the same on both sides, and in fact, uh, we get pre sheaves which are also related under this procedure of tilting. And uh, the first thing I want to prove today is that uh, <coughs> in fact, uh, this OX, and hence also. Or x plus is a sheaf, and that's a higher cohomology of x vanishes. But even better, uh, that uh, the higher cohomology of this integral subsheaf is m torsion for, so it's almost zero basically for i bigger than zero. So as I did not insist that this R plus BK not algebra, it does not, formally does not make sense to say almost zero at this point because it's not a K mod, not module. But it's a very minor point. Uh, okay. And so let me first do some preliminary, some first reductions. So the statement is equivalent to the following, that for all covers, uh, <coughs> by finitely many rational subsets, y and x, <coughs> uh, the sequence OX, X. So that's some perfectoid algebra, and then we can look at it at the almost integral level. Um, so this is basically the same as OX plus of X, A. So this uh, plus ring is almost uh, the same as this ring of power bonded elements. That's uh, true in general. And then we can do the same thing here, and then we take the product. These are again rational subsets, and <coughs> then and so on. So this long exact sequence, this long complex, that this is a exact sequence of K not A modules. So that's somehow general nonsense. <coughs> But because uh, these OX of U, these uh, algebras at the almost integral level, they are flat and periodically complete. And this is also equivalent um, <coughs> that the same sequence is exact after reducing mod pi. Okay, 
But now, <coughs> because we have proved that under this tilting, somehow we get this structure chief on the other side. <coughs> this here is just really just the same thing for the other side. Modulo pi flat. And this is then really just the product of the OX flat of ui flat, 0a, modulo pi flat, and so on. And so <coughs> it's enough to prove that this sequence, which now is in characteristic p, is exact. And so it follows that it's enough to do it in characteristic 0, uh, in characteristic p. And so we have to prove that we have these sheaves and they're these pre sheaves and they should be sheaves with vanishing cohomology. And so we do this by reduction somehow to the statements that are known in classical rigid geometry. So let me recall this that uh, 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 let S, S plus. Be a reduced <coughs> affinite k algebra of topologically finite type. So recall that this means that um, there exists some n such that this is a quotient. Also, in the topological sense, and that uh, this S plus is really just the subring of power bonded elements. So, this thing will never be a perfect algebra, except in very trivial cases. <coughs> um, but then we have the following results. So, we have the theorem, which is basically takes a cyclicity theorem, and in full details, it says the following. So, first is that in fact, because we assume that this algebra is reduced, um, this subset, the subset of power bounded elements, really is just, uh, it, is, it defines its topology, so it's open and bounded. And secondly, if u and x, which is bar SS plus um, is a rational subset. <coughs> then evaluating <coughs> the thing, uh, then we get a, again, a reduced affinite K algebra of topologically finite type. And thirdly, and this is now finally the Tate acyclicity theorem, um, all cohomology groups of this following sequence. Ah, so if X is a covered by finitely many rational subsets. Uh, then, so that's not quite the standard way of saying it, but it's equivalent. Uh, all cohomology groups of this uh, complex are annihilated by a bounded power of pi. So usually one uh, says that <coughs> the complex without the zeros here, so really on the rational level is exact, but additionally says that the <coughs> uh, transition maps are strict. And the strictness uh, uh, is equivalent by Banach's open mapping theorem to the fact that 
um, the cohomology groups of this uh, <coughs> complex are uh, annihilated by a certain power of pi. So I should say that this is basically Tate as cyclicity plus uh, Banach's open mapping theorem. <coughs> okay, and now we want to sort of start from this case and deduce what we want. And so there's sort of an intermediate kind of perfectoid rings, which I call p-finite, so the following definition. Assume that the characteristic of KSP say that a perfectoid of finite K-algebra R R plus, and I don't know whether it's a really good name. I call it P finite. Um, <coughs> if there exists some S S plus uh, as above, such that <coughs> R plus is just you take the perfection of your ring, so you take the direct limit of a Frobenius S plus and then complete periodically. And of course, R has to be R plus invert pi. Okay. Okay, and then we have the following proposition. I assume that this is p-finite, and coming from yes, it's also equal to r zero. Uh, <coughs> assume that it's p-finite, and so coming from some of the SS plus. Uh, then the first statement is that the space associated to R R plus is just the same as the space associated to and the map goes in this direction <coughs> and this is an homeomorphism which again identifies rational subsets And secondly, uh, for any rational subset, u and x rational, which then corresponds to some v and y, uh, some of the situation is again the same, that if you consider ox of u or x plus of u, then this is really just a completed perfection in the sense, as on the left, of y of v or y plus of v. <coughs> and finally, for all covers as above, some more by finitely many rational subsets, um, the sequence that we want to prove is exact is exact. So or x axis.
<coughs> okay, and <coughs> now this is easy. Um, so I mean, just basically as in the same way as you prove that the Frobenius induces an isomorphism on spectra, uh, it induces an isomorphism. So it's just the identity morphism. <coughs> And somehow it's also clear that if you take, I mean, you can define this uh, addict spectrum also for non-complete things, and then you somehow general fact that passing, taking a filtered direct limit corresponds to taking the filtered inverse limit on the spaces, so you get uh, it's S. Uh, it's the inverse limit of this, but because all transition maps now are the ident identity, that's just the spa of SS plus, and it's a general effect due to Huber. <coughs> well, okay, uh, so there's, so if you wouldn't consider topological rings, but usual rings, it's sort of in general true, this statement. And then there's some small s steps showing that some of the continuous variations exactly correspond. So this, maybe you have to do by hand, but it's not difficult. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't claim that there is this sta general statement. I don't claim that there is this general statement in this generality, but in this case, it's okay. Um, <coughs> and, but in general, it's true that uh, if you pass to the completion, then it won't change the space and also not the rational subset. So. Uh, okay, and then uh, for two, so this gives one. For two, uh, it's enough to use a new universal property. So the completed perfection of this ring will be a perfectoid affinity k algebra, and it's clear that it's the universal perfectoid affinity k algebra with the, the diode properties that some of this morphism factors over u. And for three, note that now, um, the, if you take the direct limit of our Frobenius of the sequence uh, O y of y. So we know that at each step, so um, this complex is annihilated by a power of pi. And if you take the limit of a Frobenius, um, this power of pi will again shrink by piece power. So uh, this is almost exact in the end. So, uh, so again, the statement that if something is true, up to a bounded p power, and you then iterate for Frobenius long enough, then it will be almost true, and and then we can complete. And that's what we wanted to prove. Okay, and now the general case somehow follows by presenting 
any uh, perfectoid affinoid K algebra and characteristic P as a direct limit, a completed direct limit of such P finite algebras. And so let's do this. So again, assume that the characteristic of K is P. And <coughs> any perfectoid affinoid K algebra R R plus with a slight technical assumption that R plus is a K not algebra, uh, which I will sort of ignore, um, is a completed direct limit filter direct. Uh, such that all ri, ri plus rp finite. <coughs> um, the second part says that in this case, uh, the LX spectrum of r plus really is again just uh, the direct limit as the inverse limit of the addict spectra of these rings. And again, this uh, basically identifies rational subsets in the sense that uh, any rational subset u in, let's call this x, this is, uh, these things xi, um, u and x is a pullback of a rational subset ui and xi for some i. And in this case, OX of U, OX plus of U is the completed direct limit over all J, which are bigger than I, of OXI of OXJ of UJ, OXJ plus of UJ. And <coughs> uh, there's one thing I want to say, yes. UJ is a pre-image of UI in XJ. And I think now comes the final part that, <coughs> yes. Ah. Uh, we need the following technical statement that if um, v in xi is some quasi-compact open such that the image of x and xi is contained in v. <coughs> then there exists some j such that also the image of this map will be contained in J. So this we will need to somehow show that if we have a cover of X, then each individual term of this cover can be uh, seen as a pullback from a finite level, but we also need to see that some of the cover at a finite level, and this will be to this part, due to this part of the lemma. And then finally, we can show that uh, the sheaf property is satisfied.
OK. Uh, so let's prove this. Uh, so in some sense, the hardest part is part one. But it's also not very difficult. So I mean, we do just what we expect to do. So as, for example, one can present any ring as a filtered direct limit of algebras of finite type. So uh, for any subset i and r plus, we consider have the subalgebra um, as i and r given as the image of <coughs> the quotient map from a polynomial algebra of, let's say, finite. Um, mapping to R. And let SI plus and SI be the power bonded elements. Well, convergent power series somehow. So the coefficients go to 0. Uh, And somehow, uh, so, so this gets the induced topology uh, from <coughs> now the, this map is not strict. So SI does not have the subspace topology of R. It has a quotient topology. So I should say quotient, yes. So in this way, it really becomes a uh, this with the power bonded elements really becomes a Tate algebra of finite type. And it's reduced because it's a subring here. So, so, reduced affinoid K algebra of topologically finite type. And Then we let ri, ri plus be this completion. And uh, one can show that in this case, then ri plus is really just the completed direct limit of these. Uh, of course, somehow because R R plus is perfect, you really get the maps from R I into R, and you can check that somehow this plus ring really maps into this plus ring here. <coughs> and uh, okay, this gives somehow this presentation. And <coughs> for two, we again note that uh, this bar just of the direct limit of the R I and the direct limit of the Ri plus. And here you ha sort of have to do the same sort of verification that the continuous variations exactly correspond. But it's OK. Yeah. So you have this relation. And then again, the completion doesn't change anything. So it's the same as this eddic spectrum of Ri plus. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so the problem with the little general statement is you have the, the setup, the affinity setup creates the open sub ring, uh, and then idea of definition. If you add these choices, then, then you can uh, make direct image. So yes. It's possible to run as a general. Yes. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
Yes, yes, yes. So these are spectral space and these are spectral maps. It will become important in a second. Um, so uh, part three is that, uh, again, use universal property. <coughs> and part four is slightly interesting. So um, <coughs> it's a, a general statement about spectral uh, spaces and spectral maps that I want to sort of sketch. So let's call AI this complement Xi minus V. So this is a spectral space because it's this V is a constructible subset and hence this uh, complement is a constructible subset and it's a general statement that constructible subsets of spectral spaces are again spectral and uh, let AJ be the pre-image. So it's because all transition maps are spectral, this is again spectral. And the assumption is that the inverse limit of the AI AJ is empty. <coughs> But uh, if you consider the AJ with a constructible topology, then this is a really a compact topological space, so quasi-compact and Hausdorff. It's again, it's a general statement about uh, spectral spaces. And uh, because the transition maps are spectral, it follows that um, if you give the AJ this topology, then the transition maps are continuous. for the constructible topology. So now we have an inverse limit of compact topological spaces, which is empty, and hence it has to be empty at a finite level. limit of compact space is empty. And then there's this general statement, which is probably Turunov, that it's empty at a finite level. So you get that the inverse limit Just j in some finite set j, so j is finite. Aj is empty. And then you take some k which is bigger than j. And at this index, which exists because we take a filtered in direct limit, uh, this thing will be empty. And finally, we want to check the sheaf property. And for this, note that. We can now take, uh, I have conflicting notation. So let UK be a finite cover. Uh, write UK as pre image of UKI in XI, where I is large. And if you choose it very large, then you can assume that it's the same I for all K. And uh, then the union of the UKI uh, KJ covers XJ for some J which is again larger than I and <coughs> so we may assume finally that the UK are pre-image
of a cover uh, u k i of some x i by renaming uh, this j s i possibly. And <coughs> then for all j bigger or equal to r, we have uh, that, so we know that the direct limit over the j bigger or equal to i of the sequence 0 maps to Ox j of xj maps to the product over k of the Oxj of u k j. Am I getting it right? OK. And so on. This is uh, exact because it's at each finite uh, each of these complexes is exact, and hence the direct limit is exact. And then complete get, get the desired statement. OK. Uh, so maybe I should say two things. One might also try to prove this result by directly presenting any perfectoid algebra as a direct limit of uh, algebras of finite type. And then you would also get so, some exact sequence like this, but without the almost, because we're not yet in the perfectoid situation. And <coughs> such that at each step, it's, the cohomology is somehow annihilated by some, some power of pi. But in the direct limit, this power might, of co course, explode. And you would have no control of what happens. And hence, you sort of have to first go to the perfection with each algebra to see that it's almost zero, and then sort of this almost stuff cannot explode anymore. And then you have it under control. OK? And somehow, again, it's a proof that uh, proofs in characteristic P, and then under the tilting procedure, uh, uh, gets the result in characteristic zero. But I don't know of any direct way of proving that this structure pre sheaf is, pre is actually a sheaf in characteristic zero. Okay. And, uh, okay, I might try that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So finally, we have um, improved all the basic properties about perf affinoid perfectoid spaces, and finally, we can define what a perfectoid space is. So, what did we do? So for any Perfectoid K algebra R R plus. We have an affinoid attic space X spa of R R plus over K. And <coughs> uh, we define that a perfectoid space over K. Is a in attic space over K. So it's just a full subcategory of the category of attic spaces with the uh, requirement that it's locally sort of of this affinity perfectoid nature such that. And 
it is now a formality that um, uh, we have again a tilting equivalent, so the category of perfectoid spaces over k is equivalent to the category of perfectoid spaces over k flat. No, uh, in my first lecture, I sort of defined what I mean by an addict space over k. So it's basically one which lives over spa k and z plus k naught integrally closed, if you see it this way. Uh, so I only require that this, it's locally of the form spa r r plus, where, where r r plus uh, is an affinite k algebra in the sense that uh, this k is somehow the K algebra with an open and bounded subring, and this R plus is as usual. Uh, so we have this uh, tilting equivalence that now we have really uh, kind of geometric spaces on both sides, an equal characteristic and a mixed characteristic, and their series are just equivalent. And so if so, x maps to x flat, and then we have the following properties that the underlying topological spaces are uh, the same and that um, X is a phenoid perfectoid meaning that it's of the form spa R R plus where R R plus is a perfectoid of phenoid K algebra if and only if its tilt is, is so And um, in this case, so now OX of X, OX plus of X is a, the tilt, tilts to the global sections on the other side. And that's really just a formal consequence of what we have proved. <coughs> and um, we will need the following proposition. Namely, that fiber products exist in the category of Eric's perfectoid spaces. And <coughs> this is remarkable in a sense because for usual Eric spaces, one always has to impose a finiteness condition on one of the two arrows in order to get um, a, the existence of fiber products because some are usual addict spaces they you always need some finiteness condition to ensure that they, this pre sheaf is actually a sheaf. But now in our situation we have this very general result that our pre sheaf is a sheaf and uh, just locally we have the following. So if you consider the fiber product of spa R plus over spa BP plus with spa CC plus is <coughs> spa DD plus where <coughs> um, D uh, is a completion of uh, A with C over B and it's easy to show that it's perfectoid again. And D plus inside is the integral closure of the image of A plus and the B plus C plus. Okay. And 
it's immediate to see that this has the desired universal property. I mean, the hard part really is that some, uh, um, I mean, it's clear that somehow you would want to take this at X spectrum, but uh, it's not somehow in general clear that, again, uh, this OX, this pre sheaf will again be a sheaf, but as we again end up with a perfectoid ring, it's okay. And so finally, we can uh, study the tall topology of um, perfectoid spaces. <coughs> and in particular, also prove um, the almost purity theorem. And okay. uh, let me give the definition of what an etal and finite etal morphism is, and then have the break. Okay, so. In fact, the first definition works quite in some generality, so let K be a non Archimedean field. And we say that first we define what we mean by a finite etal morphism. So, some of the problem with etal topology on perfectoid spaces is that we have no non reduced perfectoid spaces, so we cannot define in a tall morphism by using the infinitesimal lifting criterion. And we have to do something else. And so now I explain the something else. So uh, a morphism of a finite K algebras is called finite et al. If <coughs> Uh, B is a finite etal A algebra, just in the sense of usual uh, commutative algebra, and A plus is integral, uh, B plus is the integral closure of, of A plus. So, in other words, giving a finite etal algebra over some Given a finite K algebra is equivalent to giving a finite etal algebra over this rational thing, over this A, because some of the second component is uniquely determined. And <coughs> then we say that the morphism x to y of adic spaces over k is finite et al. If um, So if there exists a cover of Y by some VI, certain subsets V in which are a phenoid open. So being equal to some spa AA plus, uh, such that F inverse of V is again a phenoid, so some spa BB plus. Phenoid, and uh, such that the morphism of a phenoid rings now is um, finite et al. <coughs> so this is somehow as expected in a sense. And the last part might, may be unexpected, namely we say that a morphism Again, of adic spaces over k is a tall if for all x and y, no, for how should I put the quantifiers? Um, x and x, <coughs> there exists 
open neighborhoods x and u contained in x and y is the image point of x. So this is supposed to be an element of some open subset v instead of y. And a diagram Now you have um, this map from u to v, which is just this map restricted to u. So the image of u should be contained in v. And requires that we can complete this to a diagram where this map is finite et al. And this is an open immersion. And then there's the following proposition, um, <coughs> which for classical rigid and rigid geometry probably have appeared first in a paper of de Jong and van der Put, that uh, for attic spaces that are locally spa R R plus, where R is strong in the Syrian, so some of the kind of attic spaces that Huber considers, so Huber proved this <coughs> uh, sheaf property un under the assumption that the ring is strong in a Syrian. Uh, and for such attic spaces, he studied the etal topology and showed that uh, for such attic spaces, this definition agrees with the infinitesimal criterion. So this might uh, look strange because uh, for schemes it's wrong. So some an example would be that you take something like the affine line and over it you take some curve which somehow looks like this. Uh, but you remove some of these points. But then if you take this point x here which has the same image as this point that you have taken out get some image point y, then it's easy to see that uh, for this x you cannot find such open neighborhoods so because in any open neighborhood you would still somehow only remove some points here which would not help you. But somehow in the attic space picture you are somehow allowed to take some small neighborhood of x which looks like this and then you're fine. And <coughs> uh, so some of our general attic spaces, I do not claim that these notions are um, well behaved, but we will later see that they are well behaved uh, for perfectoid spaces. <coughs> but to see this, we will <coughs> need to use the almost purity theorem, which we haven't proved yet. So uh, some of in the meantime, we will need a slight appear an apparently stronger notion, which is the following. So now assume that K is a perfectoid field. And we say that a morphism A plus to BB plus uh, of perfectoid affinite K algebras. Uh, is strongly finite et al. If it's finite et al. <coughs> uh, and the additional condition that it's still finite et al. on the almost integral level is satisfied. So that B not A is a finite et al. A not A algebra. So, and uh, and then we get similar definitions of two and three just by inserting strongly everywhere. So, uh, 
<coughs> and so then we have the following. So recall that we had the following um, diagram. So if we have some algebra R <coughs> and consider its finitely tall algebras, and we showed that that's a fully faithful function from the uh, finite Italic covers on the almost integral level. And what we are requiring is that this lies in the essential image of this. And we showed that under tilting, these are identified. And that also on the characteristic P side, this is really an equivalent. So, Hence, we see that f from x to y is strongly finite etal if and only if f flat from x flat to y flat is strongly finite etal. And it's also equivalent to the same map being just, just without the strongly. And uh, what I will prove after the break now is that this really is an equivalence of categories, actually. OK, and now the break. So we have these notions of finite etal morphisms and etal morphisms for perfectoid spaces. And some of the goal is finally to show this result. And so let me first prove some lemmas. <coughs> some of which will not be directly needed for this, but which are important anyway. So first we show that we can form some fiber products. So if you have an etal morphism, if you pull it back by something, it's again etal and so on. So let f from x to y, to y be, but this only a priori works under this assumption that it's strongly a finite etal. Um, and uh, any morphism f to y where x, y, z are perfectoid. And then this fiber product x times y, z to z, this exists by this previous proposition. And this map is again uh, strongly uh, finite eta. And <coughs> we have the additional property, which will be important, that if one considers the underlying topological space, <coughs> then this maps to the fiber product of the topological spaces. And this map is surjective. <coughs> OK, and this somehow <coughs> reduces to the case uh, it's a finite case somehow, and so if everything is a finite, and uh, we are in the situation where this is really this map from uh, is from BB plus to AA plus strongly finite et al. Um, then uh, the fiber product is bar dd plus where d is just a tensor bc. And <coughs> d plus is integral closure of c plus. So, and so in this case, dd plus is strongly finite et al over c plus. Uh, 
Um, and <coughs> again, we will have to reduce some statements and characteristic p to the p finite case and then finally to the <coughs> case of finite type somehow. And for this, we have to send a, a need a similar result uh, about pulling back et al maps between um, adic spaces which are of this form. So maybe I should give them a name. Uh, let's call them. Uh, for this talk, uh, local linear series and attic spaces. Uh. So, in the case that um, the characteristic of KSP <coughs> and f from x to y is a finite, or just a tau morphism of local linear series and attic spaces. And, ah no, I don't even, I have to find this for all attic spaces now and it's okay. Um, uh, and G from Z to Y is any map such that Z is perfectoid. Uh, morphism of uh, okay. Uh, then this fiber product again exists. X times Y Z exists. Is perfectoid. The map to Z is finite et al or just et al. And again, we have the property that the map from the topological space underlying the fiber product to the fiber product of the topological space is surjective. And <coughs> again, this reduces to the affinoid case where uh, everything is et al. So we have x again so we have all of this and uh, so we require that this morphism from uh, BB plus to AA plus is <coughs> is a finite etal and then the fiber product is again of the form S and 2 somehow so A tensor B C and uh, D plus integral closures. And uh, and again, it's untrue that D D plus is even strongly finite at all over. And <coughs> so the proof is not difficult. Uh, so for uh, for two, we just note that uh, this fiber product A tensor B C is already complete, and so it's finite projective over C and hence already complete. And it's also true that D not A is A not A tensor D not A C not A. And so we know that this is finite et al over C not A and hence perfectoid. So because we required that on the, we have something strongly finite et al. So this map really is finite et al. <coughs> and well, that's basically the content of uh, part two for part one. 
uh, so we somehow uh, It's enough to do it for open immersions plus and for finite detail. So, <coughs> because somehow in the general case, it's at least locally a composite of the two. And so open, open immersion is clear somehow. And <coughs> for finite detail, we're reduced to this case and in the two. Uh, okay, then uh, <coughs> the part four was some of the analog of part, right, it's on the blackboard. So uh <coughs> what we additionally have to use is the almost purity theorem in characteristic P, which says that this fiber, this tensor product really is already Perfectoid and somewhat finite detail over C, and the almost purity theorem says that it's this automatically extends to the almost integral level and rest as before. And also part three is S1. So again, you can reduce to the case of an open immersion in the finite detail map. The finite etal map reduces to the affinoid case and so on. <coughs> okay. So, and <coughs> now we want to um <coughs> reduce uh, certain statements about finite etal maps in characteristic P to the case uh, of finite type. So, we, again, we have to present everything somehow as a completed direct limit. And for this, we need some uh, statements about approximation of finite etal algebras over n zillion rings. So we have the following proposition, uh, <coughs> which in the Nasirian case is an uh, is due to Alkic, and then to the non-Nasirian case generalized in the book of Gaber and Ramero, which says that if A is a flat K0 algebra uh, such that a is Hanselian along this ideal generated by pi. <coughs> and let a, a hat be the pi adic completion of separated completion of A. And then the finite etal algebras over the generic fiber for A. You can extend any such algebra to the completion. And the theorem says that this induces an equivalence of categories. And uh, <coughs> so we only need two properties about uh, Hanselianness, namely that uh, if A is already complete, then it's Hanselian. And the second property is that if a i are all Hanselian along pi, then also the direct limit is. So filter direct system, say. Uh, is Hanselian along pi. Okay. 
Okay. And so this gives us the following lemma. Or corollary, better to say. Uh, that <coughs> if you have a filter direct system of complete K0 algebras and A be a completed direct image uh, limit. <coughs> Then <coughs> uh, the category of finite etal algebras over A is the two categorical direct limit of the category of finite etal algebras over the AI. So meaning that any finite etal algebra <coughs> already comes from a finite level somehow, and any morphism of such also comes from a finite level, and any two morphisms all become equal, and so on. So. Okay. And uh, we need also need a second part, um, namely that. Uh, so this is part one above, so, uh, so if characters, the characteristic of KSP and hmm? what? Uh, yes, sorry, 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 yes, of course we want to invert pi. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. R R plus is P finite, and so coming somewhere from some S S plus, uh, then the finite etal algebras over R are just equivalent to the finite etal algebras over S. And some of the proof is now easy using what we have. Um, <coughs> that uh, so finite Etal covers and morphisms between them, between such, are finitely presented objects. So, so that um, if we just take the direct limit of the AI. that this is automatic. Uh, <coughs> and then this proposition, or maybe I should call it a theorem, says that it's really the same as the finite etal algebras over this completed limit. <coughs> and so this is for the thing which was not called one. And for part two, um, somehow this shows that the finite etal algebras over R are the two categorical direct limit of the algebras of P to the nth roots of S. But because Frobenius induces an equivalence of the category of finite etal algebras, this is then just the same as finite etal algebras over S. Okay. Good. So So the next step is the following proposition. 
um, that if we have a strongly finite eta morphism of perfectoid spaces, um, <coughs> then we require that locally on why we can find some uh, affinoid subsets such that the pre image is again affinoid and we get a finite time morphism of affinoid algebras. But in fact, one would expect that this is true for any open affine, and this is in fact true. So then for all open affine no, wait, perfectoid um, <coughs> V inside of why the preimage uh, u and x is again perfectoid, finite perfectoid, and the morphism which you get uh, on rings, so the morphism from O y of v O y plus of v to Ox of u, Ox plus of u is strongly finite at all. And for the proof, <coughs> um, all the statements um, translate directly under the tilting procedure to the other side. So we may assume uh, that's the characteristic of KSP. <coughs> and now we want to reduce to the same statement which we know for a stuff of finite type. So we want to sort of show that we can pull back this finite etal cover from a finite level. So we can assume that uh, y is really just this open affinoid, so that v is y, which is some spar r plus this affinoid perfectoid. And we can write R R plus as a completed direct limit of uh, P finite stuff. And uh, we claim that there exists some i and some xi over yi finite et al. So yi is a spar of ri, ri plus uh, finite et al. Such that x is just the pullback of xi to y. And to, pr to justify this claim, um, well, we know that <coughs> locally this is possible. Uh, so we can find a finite cover of this y by some rational subset, such that in each rational subset we can find such a finite total algebra, use the corollary part one. <coughs> And <coughs> so so the gluing is also possible on a finite level because the spaces are quasi-separated. 
So meaning that somehow the gluing condition um, can also be seen on at a finite level, which also is somehow due to this corollary part one, because any morphism of <coughs> uh, of uh, finite star algebra is also defined on a finite level, and the co-cycle condition is also satisfied on a finite level. Because that is a two categorical direct limit also says that if you have two morphisms which gives the same in the inverse limits and they already are the same at a finite level. So again, this is due to this corollary part one. So, and then you can glue this and get something finite at all over this space. And uh, so we may assume that R R plus is in fact from the beginning P finite. <coughs> because if we know this, that here the global sections are finite et al, then we know that the fiber product really is just what we get on rings. So and so we have some SS plus giving rise to this by perfection. And then let's call this why not. So uh, why not is the, so if we have Ry, which is bar of R R plus. And now we claim that there exists Here's some x naught which is finite et al. Such that we have this fiber product, and the proof is the same using now part two of the corollary. No, yes, I designed to. Now, this SS plus is reduced uh, uh, of finite type. Of topologically finite type. But to, to pass finite et al cover, yes. you are using, so you use the gluing of coherent fields so the, for classical Lewis geometry. Yes. So you have to, in other words, before you, you stated the claim, I think the order of the statement is not quite. When you state this claim, you already needed to go to x, y, zero before, because you already needed to, to construct this x over y. No, I can just glue some sp space. I mean, locally you have some space, and then I can't I just glue them together? I mean. Ah, you don't claim that. Ah, you got with adding spaces. No? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so finally, we uh, so finally we it's enough to prove our claim for x zero to to y zero because we know what how to compute the fiber product if this is affinoid and finite tall over this, and uh, so that's a classical statement in rigid geometry. <coughs> okay. <coughs> okay. So now we have this. 
And okay, now we can uh, with the same method we can prove some other statements. So uh, so uh, it follows now that in particular uh, finite etal covers uh, strongly finite etal covers of spar r r plus are the same as strongly finite etal covers uh, what what covers strongly finite etal over it is so <coughs> So it's clear that somehow anything strongly finite etal gives something here, and now we proved that conversely any such space which is strongly finite etal over it really comes from some such algebra. And uh, <coughs> for the same method of proof, one shows that the following proposition uh, assume that again the characteristic of KSP. Um, And assume that f from x to y is a tau morphism of perfectoid spaces. Um, <coughs> then for any x, <coughs> there exists a diagram. that x is in u mapping to v via the restriction of f to u. Uh, and uh, how to say this? A pullback diagram is this, where this is et al. And u naught and v naught are locally Neusserian. So somehow locally, any etal map between perfectoid space and characteristic P comes as the pullback of an etal map between stuff uh, of finite type. And as a corollary, and this is for general k, uh, strongly finite etal maps are open, uh, strongly etal maps. And the composite of two strongly etal maps is against strongly etal. Somehow, to prove these statements, it's again to do enough to do it in characteristic p, and then you, using this procedure, you reduce to the statements uh, for <coughs> adic spaces of finite type where you know that they are true. But finally, we can come to the big theorem. So, okay. <coughs> um, Let R R plus be a perfectoid if you not K algebra. So here again K is of any characteristic. Um, and X be the, the edX spectrum. And was tilt X flat. <coughs> Uh, and the first statement is just collecting what we know first. So for any affinuate perfectoid subset open 
u and x. We have a fully faithful functor. So we have that the finite detail covers of u. By what we have proved, it's the same as the finite etal covers of this uh, on the almost integral level. And this embeds fully faithfully into the category of finite detail covers of OX of u. And we would like to know that this is an equivalence. And that's somehow part two. So this is an equivalence. What is strongly finite at all? It's the finite etai covers of u in the sense defined. I mean, so, and by what I've written on the right, the f it's, ah, sorry, strongly, yes, 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 yes. So, yes, strongly. I'm sorry. Yes. And somehow then collecting this, this means that for all perfectoid k algebras, R, we have that finite etal R algebra is really, so I should say this differently. And any S over R which is finite etal, we know that first of S is again perfectoid. Uh, on the almost integral level, it's still finite etal. And uh, and the technical statement that, in fact, it's a uniformly finite projective R not A module. <coughs> so, so this is really the generalization of faulting's almost purity. Okay, so we know that part one is true. So, and we also know that part three is an immediate consequence of part two. So these are okay. So it's really about proving part two, and the idea is now that we somehow are allowed to prove this locally. So we can localize some on the perfectoid space and <coughs> then glue some of our finite etal cover. That's somehow the idea. And so somehow the idea is that locally such a, on the perfectoid space, uh, space is basically given by this perfectoid field at this, resi at this point. And for perfectoid fields, we already know the equivalence. And so <coughs> let's carry this out. So we may assume that, of course, that uh, u is x. And so fix s over r finite eternal. Uh, so the first claim is the following. For all x and x, there exists uh, some uh, rational subsets, say. A rational neighborhood of um, x <coughs> uh, and a strongly finite etal cover Uh, v of u, which gives rise to the algebra S tensor over R with OX of u in <coughs> 
So somehow we can spread out this finite etal algebra as a sheaf of finite etal algebras. And the claim is that locally, <coughs> somehow this is in the image of this functor which we have in one. And for the proof, <coughs> recall first that the completed residue field is really just the completion uh, of Ox of u of all, over all rational subsets, <coughs> and then taking the completion. So this was this strange behavior of adic spaces that if you take the completed local ring somehow, then you are left with the residue field. But that's very good, in fact. So this implies, by what we know, that the finite etal algebras over this are just the two categorical direct limit of the finite etal algebras <coughs> of Ox of u. On the other hand, we have proved the <coughs> tilting equivalence for fields. So we know that this is the same as finite etal algebras over the tilt. And we also know that the residue, this tilted thing is also just the residue field at the tilted point. So, And then again, we know that this is a two categorical direct limit over all x and u of all x flat of u flat finite tau. So somehow this means that locally we can we have our finite tau algebra and locally we can tilt it to the other side because we already can do it for fields. And so somehow, in a sense, you should imagine that somehow we start with this finite detail cover in characteristic zero. Locally, at each point, we can tilt it to the other side. Then on the other side, we glue everything together. We have the almost purity theorem there. And we deduce the almost purity theorem in characteristic zero. <coughs> OK, so. Uh, <coughs> so. We can find B flat over U flat finite et al. Uh, such that uh, um, the tilt V to U gives. Uh, this thing over x, <coughs> but then over some u prime smaller than u, v prime, which is the fiber product, to u prime will give uh, Ox of u prime tensor Rs. So first we know somehow that we can find something on here which somehow after pulling back will give the correct thing, but then tilting it back to characteristic zero, we get another finite etal cover which agrees on this residue field and hence on a small neighborhood. So this justifies somehow the claim. <coughs> so we know that locally we can find them. And so what we get is that There exists the finite cover because our space is quasi compact. X is the union of ui with ui rational. Um, <coughs> and vi to ui um, finite et al. Which gives some of the finite et al algebra or x of ui tensor rs. And because this functor in one is fully faithful, these glued to a 
finite etat, strongly finite etat. Did I say strongly? No. Strongly finite etat morphism. Uh, I have no y yet, right? So f from y to x. And now, uh, the previous proposition shows that y is again a phenoid, so it's some spa of AA plus, uh, where AA plus uh, is strongly finite at all over R R plus, and so finally, it's enough to show that this ring which we get on global sections is really just the algebra that we started with, but <coughs> that's just now follows from the sheaf properties. So, so we have the sheaf property for O Y, which gives us uh, the exact sequence that. The global sections can be calculated by taking <coughs> Ox on, on these subsets. But there, they are just given by these tensor products by construction. And this stays true on subsets. And similarly for Ox, we have an exact sequence which says that R Uh, it's this and product i and j or x so i intersect uj and <coughs> now we're basically done because s is flat over r and then And second sequence, tender RS is just the first sequence. And we see that really A is equal to S. And here we are. <coughs>